What's up YouTube? Today I'm showing you how to install the latest version of the AI voice cloning repository. This is the one that allows you to train other languages and includes all of the tools that I used for those previous videos on the topic. Now you do need an NVIDIA GPU for this to work. So if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, the AI voice cloning repository isn't for you. But let's first take a look at a few examples. Este es el modelo que entrené en español. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Đây là mô chơ mình đã đào tạo trên Vitame. Chào bạn, âm thanh này thế nào? Sai gò ni, con mô đê lù a nhi hông gò đê tò lê ng sa tê mà sư ngà. Kò lê o kì nô sa sê lù ni wà sư lê tê o rô mà jì kà wà sư lù hít yô ngà a yì mà sư tà. Today is not a package installation. I'm gonna show you how to get it set up with Python and Git. So those are the two requisites that you're gonna need. Um, in this case, you can go to this website Git right here to download Git. You just click this download for Windows option. Um, that'll get you started here and then select the standalone installer and then for python you're going to need 3.11 so in this case you can use the latest version and that one uh, all you need to do is click on this windows installer here for 64-bit and then you just run through the installation so you would just go ahead open it and in this case you'd run through the setup and make sure when you run through the setup you click on add to path um, and that'll get you there. And once we're on the GitHub page, we're gonna do uh, click on the code button here, go to copy URL to clipboard. And now what we need to do is, um, well, make sure Python's installed, go into some type of command prompt, CMD, and wherever you wanna, um, actually, hold on, a quick way to open the command line window wherever you want to in Windows, uh, let's just say you want to go to desktop. What we can do is just type in CMD up here and it's going to open up the command prompt inside of uh, the desktop. So once we're here, we want to type in git clone and then paste in the link and it's going to clone my repository. So you'll see that up here, the repository has been cloned inside of the desktop and I'll double click into that so we can take a look into it. Once you're in here, what you want to do, um, I've put this all into a batch file, so it should be pretty hands off, is click on this um, setup CUDA.bat and it's going to do all of the installation. So, so just let this run. It's going to take quite a bit of time because it's got to download a lot of stuff. So just give it some time. And one thing, if you are running into any CUDA issues, uh, make sure your drivers are um, up to date or at least at 12.1. That's what I have on this operating system. So you can go to CUDA, Windows, X64, over Windows 11, and then installer for the EXE. So that's what I would do there. And just make sure those are up to date if you're running into any issues. All right, and it'll auto boot up and download the additional models once it's all finished. So if we take a look at the screen here, you can see a bunch of downloads occurred. And what you're gonna wanna do is go up just a little bit until you see this uh, running on local URL, and then just click Control and then right uh, left click it, and it'll pop up open up in this browser. In the case that it doesn't, what you can do is just search up local host, put a colon and then do 7860. And that'll bring you into the Gradio interface. So um, here is your prompt. And what we want to do is we want to generate some audio first to make sure that it's all working. So put samples down to two, leave iterations at 30. And then you can just use the random voice here. And we're going to generate a prompt or we're going to generate the sentence here. And so if you and if we go into the command line window, scroll back down, you'll know that everything is going well um, if you don't see any errors inside of here and if you see it processing. So here's the audio sample. Let's go ahead, take a listen. Your prompt here. Alrighty, and so we have it working. Um, a couple of additional settings are deep speed and hi fi GAN, but I'll show those a little bit later. So now that we've got that kind of working, we want to let's train a voice. And what you're going to need are some audio files. So in this case, I already have a few um, on my desktop. And so I've got two videos, these ones. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these. Then what you want to do is navigate into the AI voice cloning repository and go into the voices folder. And inside of voices, we create a new folder. You can name it anything. I'm just going to call it me. And then you'll just paste those audio samples into here. If it's any other format other than MP3, it's going to take a little bit extra time to do the training. Um, just because it's got to convert everything into an MP3 file. And the reason that I'm using MP3 is that it's uh, much more compressed and uses less space. So now that we've got our data set inside of the voices folder, 
um, we want to refresh or we want to go into this training tab, go to prepare data set for large files and then refresh this area here. So to do that, we go into generate, click on refresh voice list here, go back into training. And then now you can see that we've got a data set source, uh, which is me here already. So there are a few things that you can modify inside of this tab. And there's this continuation directory, which is if you if something happens when Whisper is running and transcribing your data set, you can continue from that directory. I'll show that a little bit later. Um, and then the other parameters you can adjust are language. In this case, we're doing English. But if you want to know what um, language to use, you're going to use the ISO, I think it's 639 um, language code. So just search up the ISO 639 language code for your language um, and then put that in here. Uh, chunk size, we're going to leave at uh, 15. For some languages, you might want to go smaller. So let's say 10. Actually, we'll do chunk size 10. What this is going to do is it's going to change how long um, Whisper transcribes the audio files into. And in this case, um, this is processes to use. This is based on your CPU and it's required for pre-processing the data. This automatically um, populates based on your CPU specs. So you can just leave that at default. If you're doing any other language other than English, I would recommend you disable Whisper X alignment. Uh, some languages don't have Whisper um, alignment models. So just do that. And then rename audio files. I would suggest yes, in case your audio files have anything that aren't um, UTF-8 may cause issues. And then if you don't want it to delete the original files inside of the voices folder, in this case, uh, the MP4 files, then leave um, keep original files selected. In this case, what I'm going to do since I copied them from another location is uh, uncheck this so that it deletes those files. So my recommendation would be to always have a backup of your data set before you run any of this. Now we can just click on transcribe and process and it's going to go and run through everything. You can see that it's running through um, the Whisper X stuff and it's going to download the model. By default, it uses Whisper uh, Large V3 and I have that hard coded. So um, I maybe will add that for a um, option that you can change later on in the future. But as of right now, it's hard coded to large V3 for whisper. So we're going to wait for that to finish up a little bit. And all right. And once it's done, um, you'll see a lot of lines pop up inside of the terminal. And then you'll see a transcription um, and processing complete subscribes uh, successfully. So let's go back into the file browser here. Um, now, since I deleted the uh, original files or I unchecked the keep original files, I have shorter or mp3 files in the voices folder here we can now go into um well first go back into the ai voice cloning uh, root folder go into training and then you'll find the folder that has uh the name of the one that you named inside of voices and you'll find a train text a validation text and then an audio um folder and this contains all of these segments that were transcribed and cut from the uh, data set that you provided. So I'm using a very small data set in this case. Um, and at the end of the video, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the best practices that um, I've come to figure out with these data sets. So stick around if you want to know a little bit more about the process. And with that, I'm going to continue along with the, uh, the way that the tool works. So once we have the transcription finished here, now we want to click on create BPE tokenizer. So this is going to um, create a tokenizer and it, this is pretty quick. So uh, once you have that finished, you'll find it located inside of the um, the AI voice clothing root. Uh, you'll go into models, tokenizers, and then you'll find a tokenizer here. So in this case, I have an English tokenizer. Uh, what it does is it takes the name here uh, and then appends it with the underscore tokenizer name. So before we run training, uh, we'll want to uh, want, we'll want to select that tokenizer. Um, and in this case, you'll find it inside the settings. If you click on refresh model list, um, it'll refresh whatever models you have in here, and then you can select that tokenizer. So you'll want to do that before you run any training. And once you have that, we can now head over into the generate configuration tab for training. In this case, uh, you can select um, however e many epochs you want to do. 
generally more epochs means you train a lot model longer just for the sake of the video i'm just going to do one epoch and then for learning rate for other languages you want to crank this all the way up to max um and then text learning rate you also want to go to one as well so this is in my experience what i found works the best and then for this um, cosine annealing is generally uh, fine so i go with cosine annealing and then learning rate restarts to four batch size um, i usually just leave it here for um, one and then i'll automatically validate it so then you want to select save frequency and epochs um, in this case since i only have one up here i can only choose up to one but in the case you had 10 and you'd probably want to uh, divide this by two and then put it inside of um, you'd want to divide the epochs by two and then put that number inside of save frequencies just so you don't have too many um, save states but in this case i've got to go one and one and then down here you want to click on refresh data set list so that it pulls in that data set that you have all right so we've got all of that we can now click on validate configuration and one peculiar thing you'll notice here is that we've got a batch size of 101 and then a gradient accumulation size of 25. And this is going to result in an error because um, you want to make sure batch size is evenly divisible by the gradient accumulation size or else you run into issues. So in this case, um, just doing some mental math, we've got 125. And then now we can save this. So once we've got that, we go run training, refresh configuration so that you can find the training file. And then you'll um, select the uh, name right here. And then what we need to do is click on train down here and it's all good to go. So we'll now hop back into the uh, command line window. And what you're going to find is it's going to download the DVAE PTH file and then it'll start training. So if you run into any issues, an error will usually pop up inside of the training window here. Okay, and I actually ran into an issue here uh, where it says division by zero, not possible. So that's, um, I forgot that this is an issue, but that's because my configuration has uh, more epochs than learning rate restarts. So in this case, I'm just going to, let's just do four epochs um, and resave the configuration. And then in this case, um, once you run one training, you, what you have to do is you have to click on reload TTS so that it refreshes and relaunches the um, terminal window. So now we just got to wait for this to reload back up and we'll get back into training. All right. So it says loaded TTS ready for generation. We can go back into run training, refresh configs, and then run training once again. So this is going to go through the process once more and should start training. All right, and now you can see that um, the graphs right here, uh, they, they populated and you'll see it start to uh, continue along. And in this case, it should give you a rough estimate of the ETA. In this case, it's giving me 23 seconds per epoch with um, an estimated time of three minutes. But I found that this isn't the most accurate all the time. So um, you might just have to let training run. Alrighty, so training is done. Uh, you'll see that the console stops glowing orange once it's done. And then also in here, you'll see uh, finished training inside of the terminal. So now we just want to confirm that we've got models. So go back into the root of the AI voice cloning repository, head into training, go into me, and you'll now see this folder called fine tune. And then inside you'll see uh, models. And here are the models that you're going to use. So. In this case, training state, you can actually just delete all of these training state files. Um, that took up an additional nine gigs on my computer, which is a lot of space. And um, we, once we've confirmed that those files actually exist, we can go into settings, click on refresh model list, and then scroll down to whatever model you want to try out. In this case, we're going to do 5gpt.pth. And then uh, for demonstration's sake, I am going to do use deep speed for speed bump. And then I'm going to do use Hi-Fi GAN instead of diffusion. So uh, what these allow you to do is generate faster. And anytime you change any settings in here, just click on reload TTS. And what that's going to do is it's going to rerun the script here. So we'll wait a little bit of time for that to run. And while that is going, um, now what we want to do is 
we need to have some reference audio for Tortoise in order for it to run. So in this case, uh, the me folder has large files that are too large uh, to use as reference audio. So what we want to do is let's just delete these because um, <clears throat> we don't need them anymore. And we'll take two audio files from um, the name of the uh, model that we're going to use. We'll sort by size. I'll take the two largest ones. Um, you can actually listen to, to them to make sure that there aren't any cuts or any weird um, audio uh, artifacts inside of it before you move them. But I'm just going to take the two largest ones, go back into the root, go into voices, go back into that folder. Um, that I deleted those big files from and then paste those in here. So we've got two reference audio files uh, now inside of the voices folder and we'll use that for generation. And now there is just one more thing we have to do. We need to move um, some files. So go back into training, go back into the name of the folder um, and we're going to create a folder called backup. And you don't need to do this. You could actually just delete everything if you want to. But in this case, I'm just going to create a backup folder, move all of them into backup. And all you should be left with is fine tune and then backup. The reason we have to do this is if you don't, then when you try to use the voice um, inside of the generate option or the generate tab, when you try to use uh, the me voice in this case, or whatever you named it, it's going to try to use all of the training audio you trained with for reference audio. So if you have 30 hours of training data, it's going to try to use 30 hours of reference audio for that. Um, and that'll take forever. So I know this is kind of bulky, but that's kind of the process you have to do right now until I can get around to adjusting that inside of the code. Now that we've got a model trained, we've selected it inside of the settings for the auto regressive model. We've enabled deep speed and hi-fi GAN. We can now generate. So refresh voice list, select the voice that you want to use or whatever model you want to use here and you can change the prompt so i'm gonna say thank you for watching the youtube video let me know if you have any questions so i'm gonna run with that and in this case uh, one important distinction with hi-fi gan is that you don't use any of these sliders uh, for samples iterations because uh, it's it's this is for the diffusion model so you could actually just leave these at their default values but if you are not using um i'll, I'll show that actually later now click on exper show experimental settings and we've got a couple of other options here but right now i'm just going to click generate so that we can um, first see how this works so it's going to run through the process and it should generate pretty fast and in this case, it took four seconds on my 3060 for five seconds of audio. So let's go ahead and listen to this uh, list audio real quick. Thank you for watching the YouTube video. Let me know if you have any questions. And so that is, you know, my trained model. The reason it sounds terrible is because I trained it on a small amount of audio. And then I also only trained it for uh, four epochs. So. It's not enough. And then so I'll talk a little bit more about these other settings in here. So um, you can also use RVC voice models in here, but I'm not going to go into too much detail as I've got a previous video on it. But what you basically do is you go into the uh, root folder AI voice cloning, go into models, and then you just put whatever RVC voice models you want to use inside of this RVC models folder. And then you can select and use them as you normally would with RVC. So I don't have any um, voice models on this computer, but this is the exact same from the other video as well. Um, and then these other settings in here, I usually just leave most of these at default. I might move length penalty to eight and repetition penalty up to eight. Um, this is sometimes it might help if your model is repeating words or it's having any artifacting or any glitching inside of it. This might help a little bit for that. Now I will show you what it, uh, how to run it without HiFi GAN. So let's head into settings, turn off the HiFi GAN set of diffusion, and then we're going to reload the TTS one more time. So let's wait for that to uh, finish up. All right. And you always want to make sure it says loaded TTS ready for generation before you do any generation um, inside of the web interface here. 
And now we can play around with these options here. In my recommendation, I recommend leaving samples at the lowest amount. Um, or you can put it at like four. And then you leave iterations anywhere between 30 to 50. So I'm going to do four and 50 and then generate some audio. In this case, I'm going to get this possible latent mismatch. Um, this is because I previously uh, previously used Hi-Fi again. So now what I need to do is just click this recompute voice, uh, recompute voice latents button and it'll recompute those latents and then regenerate. So this, this will take a little bit more time just because the diffusion model is pretty heavy. Now, nine seconds instead of four for the same sentence. Uh, let's take a listen to this one. Thank you for watching the YouTube video. Alrighty, and it just completely didn't say that last part of the sentence. But once again, that's because the model is lightly trained um, and only is trained on a small bit of audio. So other than that, all of these other options, um, if you have a low amount of VRAM, you can try selecting this low VRAM option, which will load in the models um, when you use them for generation, not on boot up so that you can open up the, the interface. And that is about it. All right, so now as promised, I'm gonna talk about training other languages and some um, tips that I can give you for that. So when training other languages, you wanna make sure that you use this prepare data set for large files um, window. And for other languages in specific, you're gonna want a lot of data. So I recommend at minimum 25 hours or so of um, any type of audio in that other language. And I'd recommend that you isolate the vocals. So using a tool like a UVR to get rid of any background music from those files. But in some of my testing, I found that Tortoise is actually pretty robust. As long as a majority of the audio is speaking, it should be fine. But you want anywhere in that range, 25 hours or more. In my training, I used up to 1500 hours of audio and that was all transcribed using this process, um, which is this prepare for large files. And I just ran through this and it, it can take days to transcribe a data set. So now one thing, if you do need to come back to it later, um, say that you run into some issues, um, I'll show you real quick how you can continue it. So I'm going to move those files back into uh, voices. And in this case, we're going to select data set source. I'm going to click on transcribe and process. All right. So it finished transcribing one audio segment and I'm going to exit out of the command line window to simulate um, any possible issues uh, or needing to restart. So now uh, what we need to do is just go into the start.bat. This is how you'll actually launch the program um, after closing it. And it's going to launch back up. And in order to see continuation directory, if you only have one folder, uh, this is a little bit of a bug that I haven't fixed yet. Um, you need two folders inside of the voices uh, here. So create, let's just say a mock folder and then just throw in a single audio file into it. And now what we can do is, um, since when we're clicking continu continuation directory here, we can't see it. You go into generate, refresh voice list, and then you can now um, click on mock, click on me, and you'll see that there is a continuation directory called run here. So that's a little bit of a roundabout way um, to go through it until I can fix that bug uh, to continue running the transcription. So. Now, all we need to do in order to finish that previous transcription we were running is click on transcribe and process, and it's going to continue and finish off the process. So you can see that it's, um, since I only had two audio files, it's already on step two here, and it's just gonna run as normal here. All right, and once it's finished, um, it's gonna be the same thing. You'll notice inside of the training folder uh, that you've got the same stuff here. And if we try to transcribe and process again, we're gonna run into this error here. And so I put this here so that you don't transcribe another data set with already existing files. So to resolve that, you just click this archive existing button. What this does is it moves all of the the audio train.txt and validation.txt into archive data um, sorted by date and you'll see those folders in here. 
if you want to restore these folders to the um, training. So you just cut these, go back into me, and then you can paste them into here and then you can train with those files. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and archive existing once again, and it'll throw it back into here. So yeah, you'll see these. So those are the um, two kind of other options on this window, the continuation directory and then archive existing. Those are kind of just more convenience features in case something happens. So and then some other things as well for training other languages for generate configuration. My option, uh, my go to is I'll do 10 say for a thousand hours I did 10 epochs so if you have a hundred so if you have a thousand hours of data I just use 10 epochs with learning rate to max and text LR at max as well if you have let's say a hundred hours of data you could probably increase this to a um, hundred and run training there or you could still stick it at 10 and see how the model sounds after a few epochs now, for other languages, what I did was cosine annealing, uh, four language restarts, batch size, gradient accumulation. I let validate configuration um, calculate it on my own. But like I said earlier, if you run into any issues with batch size not being evenly divisible by gradient accumulation size, you will run into some issues. So just make sure that is the case. And then for save frequencies with such large data sets, I want to try to save as often as possible. So in this case, I save every one epoch. So I will get 10 save files for this, um, this training data or for this training run. And then uh, the source model, you leave that as auto regressive. Once again, the data set list, you would just refresh to uh, whatever you named it. And then you can save the configuration. Now, let's say you want to, um, let's say you want to continue a run. So I know this is a question that uh, several people have had. So uh, what I'm going to do is refresh data set. I'm going to validate and save real quick. Yeah, in this case, I'm just going to do 10 and 5. Save run training with this. And you'll notice that inside of here, um, we're going to get a folder called fine tune. And you'll notice that once it's training, um, you'll start to see some files inside of a uh, training state. So fine tune training state. These are basically save states that you can continue from. So now I'll show how you can continue from any any save state. So let's go ahead and close out of this and reopen up the um, window. So we'll do start bat. So the program is going to run again. Once it's started loading up here, uh, what we can do is go back into training, co generate configuration, refresh data set list, select the name that you want to train, and you want to click on reuse import data set. So this reuse import data set is going to uh, take that previous uh, YAML file that we used to save our uh, configuration. And it's now going to populate this with that state. So this is six state six. If I go, if I go into the training folder, you'll see inside of fine tuned, I've got a training state and that's going to be this one here. And then you can do all the modifications you want to do here. So if people want to train longer. You could select a hundred epochs and then save configuration and continue training from there. You can change your batch size, any of these settings you can change. Um, with this resume state path. I just don't I don't know if you can change uh, the learning rate, but I think I think you should be able to. And then so once you have that, you can just refresh configuration and rerun training and it's going to continue on training. So that's how you would start over or start from a certain point or a certain epoch or that's how you would train longer for the tortoise model. All right. So that's how you get the latest version of the AI voice cloning repository is set up and this one allows you to train other languages. So, so good luck on training other languages if you are going to endeavor in that. Sorry, it take me a little bit longer to get this video out. Uh, number one, I ran into some bugs that I had to fix. And so that took a little bit of time and there are still some cu the current bugs that I have to fix. So that's going to take a little bit more time and yeah, that'll be in the future. So. I do also have some plans on making this a package as well, but since I'm using a completely new version of Python, that's going to take a little bit longer because I've got to package all the dependencies and make sure they work. So with that, I'd like to thank all the members of my channel for supporting me. Thank you for subscribing and I will see you in a future video. So 
See you later.